Uh, and uh, this is a great pleasure to give this talk, given the circumstances, uh, thanks to the organizers who invited me. So uh, I'm going to make a sh very short introduction and then divide the rest of the talk into three logical parts, addressing spontaneous topological transitions, uh, topology transitions in single, uh, optical, optically induced traps, and the physics of uh, coupled optical traps, all in the context of uh, exciton polarity and condensates. So as this is the last uh, day of the conference, it makes little sense once again introducing uh, exciton polaritons and uh, topology in their context. Instead, uh, I would like to emphasize the importance of their dissipative and lossy uh, nature. And perhaps the best way to illustrate uh, this importance is to compare uh, the nice um, theoretical uh, figures uh, showing the spectra, the non uh, topologically non-trivial spectra with thin lines, uh, and uh, to compare them with uh, the actual experimental observation uh, where the topological modes uh, are uh, correspond to this uh, blurred, blurred, broadened line. And this is the picture from the experiments of 2018 by uh, Sebastian Klemt and workers. Um, so, uh, this dissipative nature in the mean field extended gross Pitayevsky model, equation model, uh, it enters through the uh, anti Hermitian loss term in the evolution operator, which is compensated by the gain term uh, stemming from uh, uh, the excitonic reservoir. So both these terms are anti-Hermitian, making the whole uh, Hamiltonian non-Hermitian, and this is why I, I'm going to refer to the related effects as to non-Hermitian effects. So on the one hand, uh, they can be considered parasitic or destructive for uh, conventional topological uh, effects such as topological protection of edge modes. This is mainly due to line broadening, right? Uh, and uh, uh, the simple argument is that this value of this broadening must be much lower than the value of the topological gap so that we can actually resolve the, uh, the edge mode and prevent uh, its scattering into the bulk. And uh, generally speaking, it questions the whole idea of topological protection uh, because it only blocks some of scattering cha uh, channels, leaving the other uh, unaffected, such as the polariton escape from the, uh, from the microcavity. So one should carefully assess the effects, the non-hermitian effects in this context. Uh, on the other hand, uh, this, the presence of these terms actually can lead to completely new topological effects, such as topological lasers, or non-equilibrium polariton condensates mentioned by Dion earlier, uh, in the presence of uh, localized gain or uh, either localized gain or the resonant excitation. Uh, it actually adds one more dimension to the game, which is the imaginary part of energy. Now the spectra, the, the energy is uh, complex and two-dimensional, and uh, it leads to the physics of exceptional points. Finally, the interplay of non-linear and non-Hermitian terms uh, open uh, the possibilities for new, completely new topological transitions. Uh, and this feature is unique to exciton polaritons due to their interactive nature. And this is why I am going to focus on these types of effects, non-Hermitian effects, in this talk. So the first part uh, addressing uh, spontaneous topological transition uh, transitions uh, is based on the notion of spin bifurcations of uh, trapped condensates that look like that. And uh, it was discovered and shown in 2015 by Hamid Hadi and the workers in Cambridge that uh, there uh, exists a possibility of spontaneous and random buildup of uh, spin polarization of the condensate. And this effect was interpreted and explained in terms of the spinal version of the extended gross pitayevsky equation with the spin anisotropic interaction term, uh, the gain-loss competition, and uh, linearly polarized non-Hermitian uh, state splitting due to the symmetry of the crystal. Now this equation can be mapped onto the evolution of a pseudo-vector, 
uh, whose length is proportional to the population of the con condensate and whose orientation is related to the polarization properties of this condensate. So the uh, right-hand part of the evolution uh, differential equation for this pseudo vector uh, contains two terms, one being non stemming from the non-hermitian part and affecting the length and the population of the condensate. Uh, and the second one is a simple precession uh, of this pseudo vector in an effective field, which in turn uh, consists of two parts, one being the uh, self-induced Larmor precession field due to uh, spin and isotropic interactions, and the other one stemming from the uh, imposed by the symmetry of the, of the crystal. Uh, so this idea was then uh, extended onto the lattices uh, of um, trapped condensates, and it was shown uh, that uh, there are different possible uh, collective or, or coupled uh, phases of condensates, uh, ferromagnetic, anti-ferromagnetic alignment of the condensate spins and other phases, and it was explained in terms of a kind of uh, tight binding model with the introduction of Josephson coupling uh, stemming from polariton tunneling between the condensates. And uh, the difference of the phases was actually analytically explained in terms of the difference uh, in the corresponding bifurcation thresholds. So the, uh, uh, the bifurcation, uh, the, the critical pumping power uh, above which uh, actually, uh, the symmetry preserving uh, states become, uh, become unstable. So I forgot to mention that uh, using this model, it was shown that above some critical point, uh, the, the interplay of these effects destabilizes the, uh, the symmetry preserving solutions and makes this, uh, the broken symmetry phase and spontaneous symmetry breaking possible, and uh, it is accompanied with random uh, selection of the spin of the condensate. Okay, so uh, naturally, uh, the, the buildup of a random uh, spin polarization leads to uh, the local effective magnetic field due to the spin and isotropic interactions, uh, which can uh, replace uh, the real magnetic field and the real Zeeman splitting for the purpose of time uh, reversal symmetry breaking and creation of uh, topologically non-trivial phases. So that is why we decided to study uh, such uh, spontaneous nonlinear transitions and bifurcations uh, in a honeycomb lattice of, of, of trapped condensates. And it was numerically shown by Helgi Sigurdsson that there exists four phases in this case. Uh, the regular ferromagnetic and anti-ferromagnetic phases are supplemented with a dipole and striped uh, phase. So if uh, we substitute uh, the ansatz corresponding to the ferromagnetic and anti-ferromagnetic types of uh, bonds using the same, uh, essentially the same time binding model, uh, one can uh, analytically express the bifurcation threshold, the critical pumping power, at which uh, uh, the bifurcation occurs uh, and express it in terms of the model parameters and uh, the, this integer number, which shows the number of anti-ferromagnetic bonds for each side. So this number is equal to zero for ferromagnetic phase. Uh, it is one for the striped, uh, two for dipole and three for fully anti-ferromagnetic phase. So this already allows to uh, construct, uh, start constructing the phase diagram of this system in terms of pumping powers and the coupling strengths. Uh, and it consists so far of three region, uh, regions, the uncondensed linearly polarized condensate and the broken symmetry condensate phases. So one can then uh, study uh, the topology of the excitation spectra for all four phases. It turns out that uh, uh, these spectra are gapped for at sufficiently strong pumping power for all of these phases, but it is only the fully ferromagnetic phase for which uh, this spectrum is actually topologically non-trivial, which is in agreement uh, with the relation between the symmetry and topology. 
So that allowed us to further split uh, the third broken symmetry phase into the uh, gapless, tri topologically trivial uh, phase and the topologically non-trivial uh, ferromagnetic phase. And uh, this is the main uh, result of this, uh, of this work. It allows us to identify the conditions for spontaneous topological transitions. So with this, I conclude with the first part. Uh, in this part, I uh, was discussing uh, lattices of optically trapped condensates. And in the second part, I actually want to show that even a single optically induced uh, trap for polariton condensates uh, actually demonstrates rich physics under accurate uh, treatment. Uh, so by optically induced traps, I mean complex but uh, confining potentials stemming from excitonic uh, reservoirs, which uh, have uh, the form of a ring in the microcavity, uh, and they provide both confinement and gain to the condensate, which is uh, localized uh, in the center, somewhere, somewhere uh, inside the trap. So in the uh, highly out of equilibrium or laser uh, uh, limit, uh, the condensation uh, actually occurs at the state which is governed by the uh, maximal, which corresponds to the maximal gain. And the maximal gain is in turn determined by the overlap of the uh, confined polarity and wave function, probability with probability density, uh, with uh, the uh, reservoir density. And uh, it makes uh, sense to, to predict that for sufficiently wide traps, the condensation actually occurs at some higher excited confined modes of the trap because they have higher uh, degree of overlap with the reservoir. And this was actually uh, demonstrated uh, experimentally by Alexis Eskitopoulos and co-workers at the University of Southampton. So then we decided to give uh, an analytical and quantitative interpretation to this observation and uh, developed a model based on the uh, extended gross pitayevsky equation supplemented with the rate equation on the reservoir density. Uh, so we used a simple approximation of a step-like uh, radial complex potential which uh, allows us to write down the wave functions of the, uh, of the condensate uh, in terms of Bessel and McDonald functions uh, in, with uh, complex arguments uh, separately in the two regions of the 2D space. And the connection of these two solutions results in a complex transcendental equation which can be solved numerically. So we could directly compute the threshold pumping power versus the uh, dimensionless trap radius uh, versus the size of the trap. And this figure actually explains the cascade of uh, transitions of the angular, uh, quantum angular number of the condensates or the transitions uh, of the uh, uh, condensate wave function topology. Uh, uh, and each such transition uh, uh, corresponds to the transition of a given uh, state, given mode, to the continuum where, uh, when its energy uh, equates, uh, reaches the value of the uh, barrier energy. And uh, moreover, we could uh, compute the full uh, phase, exhaustive phase diagram of the linearized version of this system versus the only two dimensionless parameters uh, of this model, which are the trap size and the ratio of interaction constants alpha and B. So we can predict the value of the angular number of the condensate dependent on these two parameters. So then uh, in the previous part, Uh, at the ground state, but for sufficiently wide traps, uh, actually the condensation and symmetric traps, the condensate leaves in a quasi-degenerate, uh, de double degenerate uh, state uh, corresponding to plus and minus m angular quantum numbers that are non-zero, and it basically describes a pinned vortex state uh, given by two complex numbers psi plus and psi minus. So the uh, gross pitayevsky equation projected onto this uh, vortex, left and right vortex states, 
can be once again mapped onto the evolution uh, of a pseudo vector whose length once again corresponds to the uh, population of the condensate, but this time uh, its orientation is uh, related uh, to the vorticity of the condensate rather than uh, its polarization properties. So this model uh, uh, also contains uh, the gain loss competition term and the effective precession in the effective field. Uh, it, is, it has only three uh, dimensionless parameters quantifying the trap asymmetry, uh, the condensate and the two interaction parameters uh, quantifying the condensate reservoir and the condensate condensate interaction. So even sticking to uh, uh, stationary solutions for this, uh, for this equation, we could predict uh, bifurcations or spontaneous transitions in this system uh, and uh, spontaneous breaking of the symmetry accompanied uh, with uh, the gradual uh, build up of vorticity or the z uh, component of the pseudo, pseudo vector. And at the same time, it is accompanied uh, with uh, abrupt uh, rotation by 90 degrees of the dipolar polariton density, which was actually uh, observed uh, in experimentally by Alexis Esketopoulos and workers uh, at the University of Southampton. And in the case of polarized pumping, it also allowed interpretation of experimentally observed uh, formation of butterfly, uh, butterfly spin polarization patterns. Uh, so further investigating the uh, full range of parameters of this model, we actually found the region of uh, parameters in the plane uh, of condensate, condensate, and condensate reservoir interactions, where the only stable solutions of uh, uh, this system uh, are limit cycles that are non-decaying, and I think this is exactly uh, this type of solutions that uh, Alexei Kavokin mentioned earlier, uh, earlier today. Uh, and these limit cycles are strongly nonlinear. They always appear in the intermediate uh, range of pumping powers between the uh, symmetric and the broken symmetry phase of the condensate, and their frequency strongly depends on the pumping power. So this analytical prediction uh, was in, in the two-mode approximation was actually confirmed by the full simulation of gross Pitayevsky equation with uh, the rate equation on the reservoir. And uh, well, uh, Kelly Sigurdsson uh, confirmed, uh, first of all, the existence of these non-decaying uh, oscillations of polariton density and uh, vorticity of the condensate and further transformation into a pinned uh, uh, giant vortex uh, with further increase of the pumping power. At this point, I also want to mention uh, the possibility uh, of the control over the vorticity of, uh, the, of the condensate with magnetic field, discussed uh, in this work by Alexei Yulin. Uh, so it was shown numerically that uh, the probability of formation uh, of a specific wor uh, orientation uh, vortex at, uh, at the specific uh, polarization component given by the orientation of the magnetic field can reach up to 85%, which allows speaking about the control uh, of, uh, over the vorticity and polarization of the trapped condensate with magnetic field. And it was shown uh, in the model, including the TTM splitting and the Zeeman splitting uh, in the four mode approximation and with full gross Pitayevsky simulation. So, uh, finally, the third part of my talk uh, is based on the natural idea that uh, excited uh, optically trapped condensates can, be, can also be uh, coupled uh, by interference of their uh, exponentially evanescent tails. And uh, to, uh, to address this effect, we had to, uh, to use the complex delta shell model to actually uh, quantify the wave function of the condensate outside of the trap. And this model once again allows to want to uh, express uh, the wave functions of the condensates in terms of Bessel functions and this time Huntley uh, functions of the first kind. 
and uh, in, in fact, they're uh, complex continuations. And once again, the connection of the two solutions at the, uh, at the point of the, uh, the res ring-like reservoir uh, produces a, a complex transcendental equation, which can be solved numerically, and uh, we could plot, once again, the lasing threshold versus the trap radius and the phase diagram of this, of this model. And it is instructive to compare directly the results of these two uh, models, the step light potential and the delta shell uh, potential. Although quantitatively they uh, produce the same results for the shape of the wave functions, and even for, uh, they both predict the cascade of transitions with increasing angular numbers of the condensates with increasing trap radius. But quantitatively they are different. First of all, the second model predicts higher angular numbers for a given trap radius. And uh, then in the limit of large traps, uh, it predicts linear behavior of the uh, minimal, uh, minimal uh, threshold of this uh, system, whereas the first model uh, actually predicts a quadratic uh, dependence in the limit of large uh, traps. And uh, then finally, uh, such condensates can be coupled. The coupled states uh, can be expressed in terms of uh, Hunkel functions and defined uh, with four complex numbers. So we have a four mod uh, model and the net gain, which governs uh, the exact state uh, at which the condensation occurs, which governs the growth rate, uh, is in turn uh, and is in turn governed by the condensate reservoir overlap the reservoir of the uh, coupled uh, wave function with the delta functional complex potential. Uh, so this overlap can be uh, expressed in terms of the simple matrix product uh, with only two uh, dimensionless uh, parameters that are the overlap integrals uh, shown here. And in fact, theta is simply the angle uh, showing the orientation of the junction between the two condensates. And uh, so finally, uh, these overlap integrals can be computed numerically, and uh, it shows, uh, the, the computation shows that uh, four, the, actually the condensation can occur at four different uh, coupled modes uh, of the condensates, uh, which are similar to uh, sigma and uh, sigma and pi bonds of electron uh, atomic orbitals, and uh, it actually the exact uh, uh, mode depends on the relative distance between the traps. So actually, all four solutions are possible depending on this distance, and uh, so these values uh, that are coupling parameters in expressed in terms of the overlap integrals. Uh, can be computed numerically and actually in the long range limit there exists an um, asymptotic uh, expression for uh, these parameters. And uh, finally it was confirmed uh, numerically uh, by Helgi Sigurdsson who demonstrated the uh, possibility of uh, alignment of the dipolar condensates at all four uh, modes. And in the, uh, in the case of two condensates and in the case of chain, uh, chain configuration, uh, it was also shown that uh, uh, the coupled, overall coupled uh, modes and ferromagnetic and anti-ferromagnetic configurations are also possible. So with this, I would like to uh, refer to the corresponding publications. I would like to thank my colleagues and the co-authors of these works, uh, thank the funding, and uh, of course, thank you for your kind attention. Thank you very much, Anton. Uh, we have a few minutes for questions now. Well, it turns out that uh, <laughs> the host of the meeting cannot raise a hand. There is no button because well, I can uh, I can <laughs> lower the hands of the others, but I cannot raise a hand to ask a question. That that's why I have to interrupt oh, yes, sometimes. Last time I was uh, afraid, but this time, since nobody is asking, well, actually, it's uh, it's kind of a question. A remark, if you can go to your slide 17, please. It's about this uh, vorticity control by the magnetic field. And uh, mm -hmm. 
Yes, this one. Uh, I didn't have the time to download your paper to check if <laughs> if you cited or not our work. I don't know if you are aware about it or not, but with the same ingredients, uh, it has already been shown experimentally that you can indeed uh, control the vorticity by the magnetic field. The difference is that uh, your optical trap is created, I think, by a ring-like pumping, yes? Mm -hmm. Whereas uh, in this experiment, it was a set of pillars, but uh, okay, so the, con the states are ring-like, and then uh, uh, what gives you this vorticity is TTM and ZM the same way. And the title of the work is Optically Controlled Chirality of Emission of Microlasers. Emission Chirality of Microlasers. Nature for yes, I'm aware of this work, except that uh, wasn't uh, wasn't the vorticity there uh, controlled by the was it was it was it the magnetic field or the uh, imposed asymmetry of the of the structure? It was magnetic sure. field because if you impose asymmetry, you will break. Uh, you will not have vorticity at all. I mean, you will have um, not some circulating currents, but just uh, lobes without uh, net current. Well, there are actually ways to impose uh, vorticity into the system. You can either uh, impose some potential which uh, has a circular, uh, circular dependence, or you can actually... Uh, well, some gauge field, I agree. Of course, you can invent something yeah. which will give you some phase like this. But it was really magnetic field, like in your case, and I think that mathematically... A real uh, magnetic field, not yes. reflective field. Well, Zeeman, I mean, okay. Zeeman splitting appearing because of a real magnetic field. Okay, thank you for this remark. I believe, uh, actually, we always neglect the orbital effect of magnetic field. But that that may also play a role in this in these systems, especially in ring uh, condensates. Not only Zeeman splitting. Even if Zeeman splitting is zero, the orbital effect of magnetic field, uh, the magnetic Stark effect, may lead to to the lifting of degeneracy of clockwise and anticlockwise currents. Well, it depends on the parameters, right? So if the value, the characteristic value of Landau splitting for electron hole pair is small compared to the binding energy, then uh, it seems that you can neglect, uh, neglect this effect. And wh whereas you need to compare the, the Zeeman splitting with uh, other small parameters of the system, such as uh, uh, the splitting induced by the asymmetry uh, of, the, of the trap. So there are uh, certainly there are regions in which uh, this uh, ne neglection of orbital effect of magnetic field can be neglected. Okay. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Anton. I, I think we, we we now need to move on. Uh, I see no no more questions. So thank you very much, Anton. And uh, let me introduce the last speaker.